Я тоже об этом сказал. Вот президент Обама упомянул об одной из угроз, это ИГИЛ. Ну а кто помогал вооружать людей, которые в Сирии боролись с, с Асадом? -то? Кто создавал благоприятный политический информационный климат? Кто подталкивал к поставкам оружия? А вы чего, разве вы не понимаете, кто там воюет? Там воюют наемники в основном. Вы знаете, что там платят деньги? И они воюют там, где платят больше. Вот они вооружились, им платят ну, определенную сумму. Мне даже называли эти суммы, которые им платят. Они там воюют уже с оружием, все, у них уже не отнимешь. Потом выяснилось, что в другом месте чуть-чуть начали тебя больше платить. Они там туда перетекут. Вот э, они захватили месторождения нефтяные, там, скажем, э, где-то в Ираке или э, в Сирии. Нефть начали добывать. У них эту нефть покупают, транспортируют, продают. Почему санкции не накладывают на, на всех, кто это делает? А что, разве Соединенные Штаты не знают, кто это делает? Это разве не их союзники этим занимаются? А у них что, нет силы, возможности повлиять на своих союзников? Или они не хотят влиять? Зачем они за бомбят ИГИЛ? Вот там начали нефть добывать и, 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 и больше платить. И там часть сразу этих боевиков перетекла из так называемой цивилизованной оппозиции. Сразу же перетекла в ИГИЛ. Потому что там больше платят. Я считаю, что это абсолютно невыверенная, непрофессиональная политика, без опоры на реалии. Надо поддержать цивилизованную демократическую оппозицию в Сирии. ISIS is on a campaign of genocide, committing atrocities across the world. Radical Islamic terrorists are determined to strike our homeland, as they did on 9-11, as they did from Boston to Orlando to San Bernardino. And all across Europe, you've seen what happened in Paris and Nice. All over Europe, it's happening. It's gotten to a point where it's not even being reported. And in many cases, the very, very dishonest press doesn't want to report it. They have their reasons, and you understand that. So today we deliver a message in one very unified voice to these forces of death and destruction. America and its allies will defeat you. We will defeat them. We can't sell beef. It's peanuts. And by the way, unbelievable people are coming. A lot of people that are illegal are great people. Just let's get it straight. They don't want to give it straight. Because the press are liars, they're terrible people. But here's an idea. So Mexico is sending lots of people. And by the way, they're coming from all over the world, including the Middle East. Why not? Come in, come on in. We're stupid, we'll take care of you, we'll pay. <laughs> Get sick, we'll take care of your hospitalization. What kind of a plan do you want? Oh, Don, you're a little controversial. You're talking about illegal immigration. I said it's illegal. That there are uh, for Immigrants on the whole create are... Come on, try getting it out. Try getting it out. I'll get it out. I mean, I don't know if you're going to put this on television, but you don't even know what you're talking about. Try getting it out. Go ahead. The premiums are going through the roof. The deductibles, frankly, you have to get hit with a Komatsu tractor in order to use them. They're so high. We just spent a million dollars building a soccer field. Okay? A soccer field for our prisoners that happen to be in Guantanamo. Okay? I don't like that. What do you need a million dollars for? Level out the surface. Let them play. The Iranians are great negotiators. The Persians are great negotiators. And we have people that are babies. It's like a chess player, grandmaster, playing against a checkers child. No, that's what it is. We give them, think of it, a nuclear scientist, and they won't give us our hostages back. It's so, it's so insane. President Obama, Secretary Kerry, I highly think you should read this book quickly. Quickly! We have very stupid people 
in our country negotiating for us. And we have leaders that don't know what they're doing. You know, Jeb Bush, one of my opponents, I noticed he's not doing very well in the polls. I've actually not. And by the way, they said I won the debate. Is that nice? Is that nice? Right? The polls came out and said I won. And the media, look at all those people back there. Scavengers. They're like scavengers. They'll probably say the crowds were about equal. Oh, they were equal. But that's the way they are. Very dishonest. CNN is terrible. CNN. You're with CNN? Are you with CNN? Are you, are you people do not cover us accurately at all. So they have a few protesters outside, and they have thousands of people. And the first question from CNN is about protesters. So what I'm going to do is span out. Span out. Show them the crowd, press. Show them the crowd. Show them the crowd. Look, they're not turning the cameras. They don't even turn the cameras. They don't even turn the cameras. Because you know what? They're very dishonest people. Because you know what they do? They have the camera, live television, on my face the entire amount. My wife goes, I go home. Were there any people there tonight, darling? They don't see. They never show the crowds. Frankly, I don't even think they give a damn about education, half of them. And I'm sure some do maybe really do. you to use that word in this I will. form? I will. Because people want to hear the truth, Frank. I watch you all the time. They want to hear the truth. Correct. We have to be able is to express ourselves. But, but referring to people as rapists, me. referring to, me. to John McCain, a war hero, five and a half years of, as a POW, and you call him a dummy. Is that appropriate in running for president? Okay. Uh, let's, you got to let me speak, though, Frank, because you right. interrupt all the time, okay? <laughs> so, no, I know him too well. That's the problem. In the center of the stage tonight, businessman Donald Trump. I would never give up my microphone. I thought that was disgusting. That showed such weakness. The way he was taken away by two young women. The microphone, they just took the whole place over. That will never happen with me. I don't know if I'll do the fighting myself or if other people will. But that was a disgrace. The way they took, I felt badly for him. But it showed that he's weak. You want to be what, vice president? Oh, now his question's no longer as good. He had great credibility until he said that. Now it's like, where did he come from? We need a leader that wrote the art of the deal. I said trade deals. Who would do better? I know, I'll tell you what, I know the greatest negotiators in the world. Some are horrible people, horrible human beings. Who cares? Some Wall Street guys, they're brutal, they're miserable. You wouldn't want to go out to dinner. They're terrible people. I love them. You know who's our primary representative right now? Carolyn Kennedy. You know how she got the job? 60 Minutes. She went to the White House. She said, I'd love to have a job. I have nothing to do. They said, how would you like to be the ambassador to Japan? She goes, really? You know why I say she's nice? Because my daughter Ivanka likes her. My daughter's so great. She's such a great person. My daughter likes her. She said, Daddy, she's such a nice person. I, I, I don't want a nice, I want to kill her. We're tired of the nice people. What do you need to spend a million dollars? We just spent, it's a story today. A million dollars on a soccer field? How do you spend a million dollars doing the soccer field? You have a level piece of land. Throw them a ball, let them play soccer, if they have to play at all. See, you're not supposed to say that somebody graduated last or second to last in their class, because you're supposed to be like Frank says, very nice. Folks, I want to make America great again. We want to get down to brass tacks. We don't want to listen to his stuff with being politically correct and everything has to... We have a lot of work to do. Ten years ago, everybody wanted the wall. The Democrats, the Republicans, they couldn't get it. You know one of the reasons they couldn't get it? Environmental impact statements. Did you know that? There were toads. There were the... It's the most incredible thing. NBC calls me, we'd like to see you. A couple of months ago, the head of NBC comes to see me. And the head of NBC's boss, I don't want to mention names because they're really good people. They're friends of mine, although I probably will never speak to them again either. First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's number 11. He's got 1% in the polls. And how he got up here, there's far too many people. Anyway, would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear arsenal? Mr. Trump, 
I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. But Jake, Jake, I want to, I want to give Jake, Mr. Trump. They're going to make it's a massive plant, one of the biggest in the world. They're going to make all these cars, trucks, and parts. They're even making parts. It's so big they'll make the parts, the trucks. And I actually gave them a good idea. Why don't we just let the illegals drive the cars and trucks right in through the border? They don't have to even. It's true. No, I gave them that. Save a lot of money. That'll be next. No, no, they'll be doing that next. So the Mexican government is not happy with me, to put it mildly. And again, I respect Mexico, but their leaders are too smart for our leaders because we have stupid leaders, okay? You mean it's not politically correct and yet everybody uses it? I say, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? Oh, you want me to say that? Okay. I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. He would give a sermon you never wanted to leave. Sometimes we have sermons and every once in a while we think about leaving a little early, right? Even though we're Christian. And pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person. Again, we're looking for you to raise your hand now. Raise your hand now if you won't make that pledge tonight. Mr. Trump. Who is Uma married to? One of the great sleazebags of our time. Anthony Weiner, did you know that? She's married to Anthony Weiner. You know, the little bing, 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 bum, bum. I love you very much. I'm a very militaristic person, but you have to know when to use the military. I am the only person up here that fought against going into Iraq. You, now, can I, can now, I make a response to just that? Just excuse me, one second, Randy, if you don't mind, Randy. You know, you are on less, you, you do have your 1%. But, but have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. I think I, if, I, if I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. I See, I could say absolutely, and everybody. I don't think in terms of that. I, I think in terms of let's go on and let's make it right. Let's say that Jeb Bush or Hillary or one of these politicians all talk, no action all controlled by lobbyists and special interests and donors. People like me from previous months, okay? Total control. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. You know what that is, right? We have heads being chopped off because they're Christian in the Middle East. We have borders where people are being killed all of. The world is cracking up and they're worried about my tone. So what would President Trump do? So I don't have money, I don't have lobbyists. In fact, I've had in the last two weeks, because I've hired many of the lobbyists, that's true. I hire lobbyists. They're great. They're terrific people. They can do whatever the hell you want them to do, okay? It's true. Thanks. I was a this businessman. I got along with Clinton. I got along with everybody. Yeah. That was my job, to get along with people. But the I simple didn't fact to, is... Excuse me. One second. No. I the didn't want to... The simple fact is, Donald, you okay. cannot take... More energy tonight. I like no. that. Look. I was asked the question. I didn't want... It was my obligation as a businessman, to my family, to my company, to my employees, to get along with all politicians. I got along with all of them. And I did a damn good job in doing it. Go ahead. So. And the poll just came out. And I'm tied with Jeb Bush. And I said, oh, that's too bad. How can I be tied with this guy? He's terrible. He's terrible. <laughs> Hillary Clinton was the worst secretary of state in the history of our country. The worst. Our enemies are a disaster. Our friends, and they hate us more. So, Uma is getting classified secrets. She's married to Anthony Weiner, who's a perv. Oh, he is. Somewhere there we'll find a balance tonight. So I would have dinner with my kids almost always, and I'm always available to my children. I could be in the middle of the biggest, most important deal. And for instance, if Ivanka called me right now and say, bye-bye, Frank, you're a wonderful guy. I think it's unlikely, but if Jeb became president, when they say, Mr. President, it's very bad that Ford's building in Mexico. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll do something. Let me go to sleep first. We'll do something. We need somebody that can take our jobs back, Frank, because we're going to hell. Our country's going to hell. And Frank doesn't like the word hell, but we're going to hell. I beat the people from China. I win against China. You can win against China if you're smart. 
But our people don't have a clue. We give state dinners to the heads of China. I say, why are you doing state dinners for them? They're ripping us left and right. Just take them to McDonald's and go back to the negotiating table. Seriously. Well, I heard you, you, it, a nice man. He apologized because he actually said that we had a misunderstanding. And he said today that Donald Trump is maybe the best interview there is anywhere that he's ever done. Now, unless he was just saying that on CNN to be nice, but he did say that. Oh, <laughs> well, you're the best interview in America. And we had a legitimate misunderstanding in terms of his pronunciation of a word. But uh, I would say just, <laughs> well, I think it was. And he actually said that. Did you say that? And so so radio makes an interesting thing. Okay, good. so uh, I will say this, though. Uh, you was giving me name after name, Arab name, Arab name, Arab, and there are few people anywhere, anywhere that would have known those names. I think he was reading them off a sheet. And Fox hasn't touched this. And I've, been in, I've been in touch with Kelly, too, and I've been in Let's go. Come on. Got to go. All right. Got to go. There's He's screwing up my whole speech, this guy. Yeah. Go ahead. There's, there's counterfeit substandard parts in most of the nuclear plants in the United States. Counterfeit substandard parts in nuclear plants in the United States. I'm not surprised to hear that. Why? Am I surprised? And some of them have come from China. Now, when I brought... And in airplanes, too, by the way. When I brought this out, the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, accused me of... Con and our weapons, we don't even know if they work. To show you how stupid we are, they did a major television program, 60 Minutes, I don't know if anybody saw it, where they go into the silos, the stuff is old, it's rotted, the phone systems don't work, the wires going to the phones are all, they don't even know if it works. And I said, if I were Obama, I wouldn't be showing that. And they got in there because Obama wanted people to see how bad it is so that maybe they could get some money to fix it up. How stupid is this? Our enemies are looking at this stuff with 44-year-old phones and wires that don't work. And the people, they're interviewing the people that are working in these phone systems. And they're saying, no, you can't hear. You can't hear. And I'm saying, can you believe what we're doing? It's like in the war. They were saying, we're going in in two weeks and we're going to be attacking a certain city. You know what I'm talking about. And we're going to attack, and this is the way we're doing it, and we're going here. And I'm saying, can you imagine the great General Douglas MacArthur or George Patton, any of these great guys, any of these great guys, listening to a president say exactly what we're going to be doing? Then I said, you know, that's smart because they'll do the opposite. They didn't, it was exactly as he said. First of all, these lenders aren't babies. These are total killers. These are not the nice, sweet little people that you think, okay? You know, I mean, you're living in a world of the make-believe, Chris. You wanna know the truth. Right now we have Obama, he won't call. He doesn't even call to get our hostages back from Iran. Here we are in the middle of a deal, and he doesn't call about that. One sentence, I'd say, you got to, before we start, get those people back. Used to be three, now it's four. Get those people. They'd be back the next hour. You hear our politicians, John McCain, two days. Oh, Benghazi, you don't hear about it anymore. Hillary Clinton with the emails. Oh, the emails, two days. I'm more disappointed in the Republicans in many ways. They talk and talk and talk. And I just got back from Chattanooga, too. And I spoke to some Marines there. And guess what happens to Anthony Weiner? A month ago, I see he went to work for a public relations firm. Do you believe it? Now, if you think that Uma isn't telling Anthony, who she's probably desperately in love with, in all fairness to Anthony, because why else would she marry this guy? Can you believe it? Can't see straight. But if you would... I got involved because I'm in the nursing home profession. Okay, hey, come on, you know, I got to go. Hey, come on. Oh, wait a minute. No. no. Let me finish this. Okay. You know what, I think your question's great, and I can understand. He's talking about basically counterfeit parts, just to cut to the chase. We don't have to know that you're in the nursing home business. What, are you trying to talk to some of us about joining your little home? Come on, sit down. No, we think it's good. We think your point is good. Yeah, give it to him, good. They said to Marco Rubio, are you having fun? He's sweating like a pig. I never saw a guy sweat like this. The, the sweat is pouring down. I think Rubio is a low energy, but here's the problem with Rubio. When you sweat that much. <laughs> now think of it. So you have Putin, he's sitting over here. And he's waiting to kill the stupid Americans because he's been just destroying us so badly. So he figures, oh, and a guy walks in and he's soaking wet and sweating. Hello, hello, can I have some water? 
and Putin's sitting there, what the hell kind of stuff is this? This is not exactly a poker player, folks. John McCain goes, oh boy, Trump makes my life difficult. He had 15,000 crazies show up, crazies. He called them all crazy. I said, they weren't crazy. They were great Americans. These people, if you would have seen these people, you, I know what a crazy is. I know all about crazies. <laughs> these weren't crazy. So he insulted me, and he insulted everybody in that room. And I said, somebody should run against John McCain, who has been, you know, in my opinion, not so hot. And I supported him. I supported him for president. I raised a million dollars for him. It's a lot of money. I supported him. He lost. He let us down. But, you know, he lost. So I never liked him as much after that, because I don't like losers. <laughs> but, but, Frank, he's Frank, let me get hero. to it. He hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years he's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Do you He's agree with that? He's a war hero because he was captured. Newsflash, the Republican Party's been fighting against a single-payer okay. system for a decade. So I think you're on the wrong side of this if you're still arguing for a single-payer system. Not, I'm not, I don't think you heard me. You're having a hard time tonight. All right, let... I know Anthony Weiner for a long time. I knew before they caught him with the bing, 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 right? And he was a bad guy then. It turned out that... He was a really bad guy. So Rand Paul calls. He wants to play golf. I play golf, I kill him at golf, I did. But when the folks of Iowa found out the true facts of the job that you've done in Wisconsin, all of a sudden you tubed. He was number one, now he's number six or seven in the poll. So Jeb Bush, let's say he's president. Oh yeah, yeah. He knows it's so good. He'll have a little pressure, don't let the plant be built. And he might even say, don't let the plant be built. Might even call the head of Ford. The plant's not gonna be built. And then the next day, he'll be called by special interests that supported him, his lobbyists who push him around like a piece of candy. Jeb Bush will never take us to the promised land. He doesn't have it. You ever see, did you ever see a sign that says Jeb Bush or Bush? Now, there's a reason he doesn't use his last name, because it's not going to work too well. Because we had a lot of problems with that last name. And I think you can see I'm having a good time. I really am. You know, they said to Jeb Bush, he was like this. They said, are you having fun? Yes. Uh, our governor here in Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, has described some of your comments about women as reprehensible. Do you have a response to that? No, he must have been talking about Jeb Bush. Because frankly, Jeb Bush said he didn't want to fund women's health issues. And then he came back a few hours later and he said he misspoke. I think he must be talking about Jeb Bush. He's not talking about me. Jeb Bush said that on women's health issues that he won't fund him. Then he went out, he apologized. He's, you okay? Jeb Bush said that on women's health issues, he won't fund them. Whose phone is that? You ready? Third time. Ready? Jeb Bush said that on women's health issues, he won't fund them. Then he said, oh, I misspoke. I'm so sorry. Uh, there was no question because I heard when he said the statement. I was watching and he said the statement and I said, wow, I can't believe it. I will take care of women. I respect women. I will take care of women. You With said you're going to cut 90%. funding for women's health issues. I have a issues. proven you said record. I yeah, a except proven you record. said it. I want to... Jeb will be very poor as a president. No energy. Okay, yes. Jeb Bush a frequent target of yours, and what do you think well, about Well, I would say Jeb Bush is a frequent target because when this whole thing started, I thought he was going to be the primary competition, but he's drifted very much to the middle of the pack, and he's rapidly disappearing. So we're going to have to start looking at somebody else. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind, and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. We have totally incompetent people. Now, some people say they're bad people. I don't think they're that smart to be bad people. I just think, honestly, I mean, a lot of people get angry when I say, I don't think they're bad. I think they're stupid. I think they're incompetent. I think Hillary would be a terrible president. She was the worst secretary of state in the history of our nation. Why would she be a good president? I think she'd be a terrible president. These politicians, they run and they run and they win and sometimes they lose and they keep running. That's all they do is run. And then you have this guy, Lindsey Graham. 
A total lightweight. Here's a guy in the private sector, he couldn't get a job, believe me. They dunk people with a cage. Did you see that? They dunk them and drown them. These people make Saddam Hussein look like a choir boy. And then I watch this idiot Lindsey Graham on television today, and he calls me a jackass. He's a jackass. He actually probably seems to me not as bright, honestly, as Rick Perry. I think Rick Perry probably is smarter than Lindsey Graham, but what do I know? I'm at 38, I think, in South Carolina. He's at three. He's a senator. They have zero. They have one. They have two. Why do they keep going? There's something I don't understand. If I was one of them, I would crawl quietly out. I'd probably tweet. I've decided to get out of the race. I wouldn't have a news conference. No, it's true. I'd tweet. I've decided I'm going to get out of the race. And then I'd sneak out to some place with my wife and I'd just go away. Okay. So now Bush goes in and he makes a mistake, and then Obama, frankly, might as well have stayed there, but okay, but he made a mistake too. And I said, keep the oil. Do you remember that? And everyone said, you can't keep the oil. It's a sovereign country. You can't keep the oil. I said, keep the oil. We're in there now. You blew it. You shouldn't have gone in. So here's who has it. Iran is taking it, and ISIS has it. And ISIS now is building a hotel in Iraq. They're competing with me. Do you believe it? They did the beheading, and then they've done other... And I said, you know, they're making a big mistake, ISIS. Because if they wouldn't have done that, and if they wouldn't keep doing it, we wouldn't have cared. We could have been gone. But you can't. Now, when you see what they're doing, you can't. Had they not done those things, the level of violence, we're like living in medieval times. You know, when you hear middle, medieval times, you always think we're all civilized. It's a jungle. It's horrible out there. They call me the ratings machine. So I have, uh, you know, she... she gets out and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her, wherever. And then I, I see uh, Rick Perry the other day, and he's so, you know, he's doing very poorly in the polls. He put glasses on so people will think he's smart. And it's, it just doesn't work. You know, people can see through the glasses. So he said, he shouldn't be allowed on the debate stage. I said to myself, he shouldn't. And then I tweeted, you know, I have... Many millions between Facebook and Twitter, it's great. It's like owning a newspaper without the losses. It's incredible. <laughs> incredible. So I tweeted that Rick Perry should have to have an IQ test before getting on the debate stage. I mean, here's a guy who goes on a bicycle to go on a bicycle race. He's 73 years old. He's in a bicycle race. He falls, he breaks his leg during the negotiation. And I tell everybody, and you probably heard it, I swear to you, I will never be in a bicycle race as long as I'm president. I... To subject my wife into the middle of a raucous political conversation was completely inappropriate. And I hope you apologize for that, Donald. Well, I have to tell you, I hear phenomenal things. I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. know her. And this is she is a absolutely the love of my life. And she's right here. And why don't Good. you apologize Good. for her? No, I won't right do that now. because I said nothing yeah. wrong. But I do hear so she's here's... a lovely woman. I want to get paid the same as a man. And I think you understand that. So if you become president, will a woman make the same as a man? And do I get to choose what I do with my body? You're going to make the same if you do as good a job. They spent, listen to this, $1 million on ads against me in Iowa. Now, here's the good news. They used the best pictures. I look so good in those pictures, I'm trying to find where they got them. <laughs> because they're stupid. But I was like a young guy. I look so handsome. I said to myself, oh, I wish I still looked like that. It would be great. And his son came back from the deli. And he called the father. He used to call him old man. Old man, I'll be there in three minutes. Rubio, I've never seen a young guy sweat that much. No, I've never seen, he's drinking water, water, water. I never saw anything like this with him with the water. But, and everybody, Huckabee, nice guy. He was seriously hot. He was soaking wet. I grabbed him around his back. I said, good job. And it was soaking wet. I immediately. It seems like this election has been a whole lot about a person who's very high in the polls but doesn't have a clue about how to govern, a person who has been filled with scandals and who could not lead. And of course, I'm talking about Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I think America... Thank you. It's been an amazing journey for me. It's been a lot of fun. I never thought I'd be a politician in my life. 
Uh, he said, I'm not. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm not. I refuse. I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. I tell you that. If I decide to run, you'll have the great pleasure of voting for the man that will easily go down as the greatest president in the history of the United States. Me, Donald John Trump. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a, a, like a truck driver. We're all a little chubby, but Rosie's just worse than most of us. But it's not the chubbiness. Rosie is a very unattractive person, both inside and out. If I were running The View, I'd fire Rosie. I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. I'd say, Rosie, you're fired. But Mr. Trump, you're not a nice person. That's true, but actually I am. I think I am a nice person. I'm actually a nice person. I'm really rich. I'll show you that in a second. I like China. I just sold an apartment for $15 million to somebody from China. China, China, China. I've been saying China, 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 China. Frankly, I don't even think they give a damn about education, half of them. And I'm sure some do maybe really do. you want to use that word in this well, I will, form. I will. Because people want to hear the truth, Frank. I watch you all the time. They want to hear the truth. Frank, Correct. We have to be able Is to express ourselves. But, but referring to people as rapists, Excuse me. referring to, Excuse me. to John McCain, a war hero, five and a half years of, as a POW, and you call him a dummy. Is that appropriate? In running for president. Okay. Uh, let's, you gotta let me speak though, Frank, because you interrupt all the time, okay? <laughs> so, no, I know him too well, that's the problem. In the center of the stage tonight, businessman Donald Trump. I would never give up my microphone. I thought that was disgusting. That showed such weakness. The way he was taken away by two young women the microphone. They just took the whole place over. That will never happen with me. I don't know if I'll do the fighting myself or if other people will, but that was a disgrace. The way they took, I felt badly for him, but it showed that he's weak. You want to be what, vice president? Oh, now his question's no longer as good. He had great credibility until he said that. Now it's like, where did he come from? We need a leader that wrote The Art of the Deal. I said, trade deals. Who would do better? I know, I'll tell you what, I know the greatest negotiators in the world. Some are horrible people, horrible human beings. Who cares? <laughs> Some Wall Street guys, they're brutal, they're miserable. You wouldn't want to go out to dinner. They're terrible people. <laughs> I love them. You know who's our primary representative right now? Carolyn Kennedy. <laughs> you know how she got the job? 60 Minutes. She went to the White House. She said, I'd love to have a job. I have nothing to do. They said, how would you like to be the ambassador to Japan? She goes, really? You know why I say she's nice? Because my daughter Ivanka likes her. My daughter's so great. She's such a great person. My daughter likes her. She said, Daddy, she's such a nice person. I, I, I don't want a nice, I want to kill her. We're tired of the nice people. What do you need to spend a million dollars? We just spent, it's a story today, a million dollars on a soccer field. How do you spend a million dollars doing the soccer field? You have a level piece of land. Throw them a ball, let them play soccer, if they have to play at all. See, you're not supposed to say that somebody graduated last or second to last in their class, because you're supposed to be like Frank says, very nice. Folks, I want to make America great again. We want to get down to brass tacks. We don't want to listen to his stuff with being politically correct and everything has to we have a lot of work to do. Ten years ago, everybody wanted the wall. The Democrats, the Republicans, they couldn't get it. You know one of the reasons they couldn't get it? Environmental impact statements. Did you know that? There were toads. There were the, it's the most incredible thing. NBC calls me, we'd like to see you. A couple of months ago, the head of NBC comes to see me, 
and the head of NBC's boss. I don't want to mention names because they're really good people. They're friends of mine, although I probably will never speak to them again either. First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's number 11. He's got 1% in the polls. And how he got up here, there's far too many people. Anyway, would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear arsenal? Jake, Jake, the Mr. Trump. I never attacked him on his look. And believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. But Jake, Jake, I want to I want to give Jake, Mr. Jake. Trump. They're going to make, it's a massive plant, one of the biggest in the world. They're going to make all these cars, trucks, and parts. They're even making parts. It's so big, they'll make the parts, the trucks. And I actually gave them a good idea. Why don't we just let the illegals drive the cars and trucks right in through the border? They don't have to even, it's true. No, I gave them that. Save a lot of money. That'll be next. No, no, they'll be doing that next. So the Mexican government is not happy with me, to put it mildly. And again, I respect Mexico, but their leaders are too smart for our leaders, because we have stupid leaders, okay? You mean it's not politically correct, and yet everybody uses it? I say, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? Oh, you want me to say that? Okay. I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. He would give a sermon you never wanted to leave. Sometimes we have sermons, and every once in a while we think about leaving a little early, right, even though we're Christian. And pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person. Again, we're looking for you to raise your hand now. Raise your hand now if you won't make that pledge tonight. Mr. Trump. Who is Uma married to? One of the great sleazebags of our time. Anthony Weiner, did you know that? She's married to Anthony Weiner. You know, the little bing, 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 bomb, bomb. I love you very much.